Okay, with your brush in hand, you're going to start painting. Now you have to remember that your light is coming from the upper left, in this particular picture anyways. So, since I'm painting with a darker color, I have to paint on the right side, not the left. You can choose to paint on the left if you're doing rim lighting. Rim lighting will be a very harsh, dark part like right here. And all the edges, like along his snout and along his eyebrows and ears, on the edges, just the edges, will have a bright color. And I'll show you that in a second. But I'm going to do some general lighting first. Okay, so I'm going to make the brush huge. Now, uh, you can notice I'm doing this without actually right-clicking and going Master Diameter. How am I doing this? Well, the, sh the keyboard shortcut for this is the left and right brackets. Those are by the P key. So you can have one hand on your, on your mouse or your pen, and the other hand using the keyboard. Very quick. Helps a lot. So get a pretty big brush and paint the side. Then for the blue on the muzzle, paint one side. Now I have a general kind of shade going on. Um, and remember, I'm only painting blue. I'm not painting any other colors. So this is what you have to look at. Okay, where all the lines are now, I'm actually going to have to paint on the opposite side of that line. So because the light is coming from the left, whatever line that I have where there would be a, a dip, like this is the eyebrow. So knowing in you know anatomy, it's kind of it's his temple, so that goes in a little bit. So because it goes in, I actually paint there. Because anything that goes inward makes a shadow, and because his mane on the side of his face is supposed to be sticking out, I actually paint behind it. Now these big things here, these are you know just lengths of fur that are going down his neck. Um, you make these kind of triangular shapes. And it takes a little bit of practice. It took me a while to learn how to do it. And I still don't do it that great, but you can choose to do that or not. It just helps to add some detail to it. You can pretty much wherever you have like these lines are here where they meet you can draw a line coming up from that and that's kind of how it works and then you just take these two right here and you, you, you make a pyramid with them and they just meet at the end that's kind of how it works um, usually down the forehead has a shade you kind of shade it right there and between the eyes a lot of lines so it bunches up it gathers a lot of shadows and down the edge of the nose in the middle and on the bottom of the eyebrow has some shade. So that's pretty much it. I already added, you know, most of everything there. Alright, so you can see that I've got most of the picture shaded in. I can actually go in now and add a little bit darker colors. So I can choose that blue again. Go a little bit darker. Just kind of shade in areas that I think would look good. Mostly, the darker you go, the less to the left you're going to be. If, if in your picture you're lighting sources to the upper left, like mine is. And uh, usually at the bottom, since it's at the upper left, the bottom right is where you go. So where these little fur piles meet, you can highlight those in the corners, where every corner is underneath all of his mane on the f on his face here you can actually choose to follow the shape so that it looks like a shadow like like it's casting a shadow onto his neck so that's that Get a little bit darker right there don't want to go into too much detail and take up a lot of your time so I'll just try to quickly do this Usually the edge of the nose, too, has a lot of shade on it. Okay, so that's that.
now that we're pretty much done with the dark parts here. I'll do the opposite and go brighter. So take your blue again. You want to go past the neutral shade. Go brighter. Now you do all the upper left stuff. So since the shadow's here, you do this. Right? See how it pops out? And you want to catch, you have to understand that when, when light hits things, the thing that it, that's going to be the brightest is the highest point. It's always going to be folds, like in clothing, it's always, always going to be on the wrinkle. It's always going to be on the edges of surfaces where they're curved, things like that. So it just takes a little bit of observation in everyday objects to understand what you're looking at. Do you like on these wrinkles? The highest point would be right there and right here. So painting those are the things that are going to make it stand out and look realistic. Paint on the edge of the nose and a little bit right there. A little bit of the hair right there. The tops of the head. Then along this part of his face. And the more you go to the right side of the image, the less light you're going to put. Just just a little bit. Sometimes the light that you pick is too bright, and you actually have to go back to your medium color. And you go over the shadows. And that tends to look better than if you put too much light. Okay, so that's the blue. That's pretty much all you need. <laughs> um, so I'll go ahead and start doing a different color now. I'll go with the white. The white is pretty bright as it is. So it doesn't need too much more. So we'll, we'll just kind of quickly go through this. Remember, when you change colors, you have to choose the layer that you're wanting to color. Remember, I, I was just doing the blue, so now that I'm doing the white, i got to change to the white. So don't forget, because if I start on the blue and start painting, it's on the blue layer, not the white. And I'll have screwed up. Of course, you have a history tab here that's always good to go to because it keeps track of like 20 something mistakes that you, or you know, moves that you make. And it allows you to go back in time pretty much. Okay, so let me get this going. See, I'm just kind of quickly, because I know pretty much where they go by now. In doing so many wolf pictures, I know how the fur is supposed to react, how it's kind of supposed to look. Okay. And uh, because the muzzle actually sticks out of the face, and the light is coming from the upper, le upper left, I'm going to cast a shadow onto everything on this side. So this is something you can experiment with, is doing a kind of shadow like that. See? And you can go a little bit darker at the point where it meets. that okay so it kind of looks like he's got a, a shade going on there give him some dark eyes then you can go back with like a white usually for when you're doing whitish kind of colors white is true white is really never seen in nature so my art teacher told me and if you kind of look at it yeah you never really see I mean just pure white like this but it looks cool, so who cares? 